the Meepo Voyager X is the best electric skateboard that you probably shouldn't buy. Let me explain. I absolutely love this board. It's been my favorite electric skateboard that I've ever owned, but there are a few flaws that make it so I don't know if you should buy it, or at least you shouldn't buy it without knowing what the flaws are. So we're gonna go over some pros and cons Real quick, let's get started with the pros. The first pro by a mile is its range. Meepo advertises the range at 25 to 36 miles, which is a really big spread. But in my own testing, which I weigh 180 pounds, I'm 6'4", and I ride at about 15 to 20 miles an hour, generally while I'm cruising, and I got 29 miles of range on a single charge, and that is just insane to me. I really wasn't expecting to get that much range. Usually when electric skateboard companies advertise their range, they're with smaller and lighter riders, and then they're going slow. They're going like 10 or 15 miles an hour and just totally straight, no hills or anything. But the fact that I was able to get 29 miles of range in the real world is crazy. Also, that was with the stock 90 millimeter wheels that they come with, not the 110 millimeter cloud wheels. Those will drop the range for sure, but I haven't tested those quite yet. The second pro without a doubt is its power. This board is arguably too powerful. Uh, there are four speed modes and I pretty much ride in mode three, which is the second most powerful. I switch to mode four sometimes if I'm climbing up a hill or doing whatever, but generally, I actually don't like the amount of torque that it has. I mean, it's it's awesome, don't get me wrong. Um, it's a good problem to have, but it's so much torque that you can be going like 25 miles an hour and you bump the remote with your thumb because you go over a bump or whatever, and it just wants to take off and it'll throw you off the back. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I've never experienced any amount of torque like that. It's just insane. Um, so that's obviously a good thing. Uh, the max speed, I've gotten it up to about 31 or 32 miles an hour, and then I didn't feel comfortable going faster. It seemed like it could have gone faster, but again, you're, I don't know. <sighs> anyway, it's just fast. It gets, it gets sketchy. <laughs> so like, if you're going to go that fast, be careful, wear a helmet, obviously, but it, it's a bit scary. So I would say the power is insanely good. Uh, hill climbing ability, it climbs hills with no problem. And that power is complemented by its range. Whereas with my last board, which was the Backfire G2 or the G3, when I was going that fast, I knew I was sacrificing my range. And if I wanted to top out the top speed, I wasn't gonna make it very far. On the Meepo Voyager X, I don't worry about going too fast because I know the range is gonna get me there no matter what. I mean, getting nearly 30 miles in a single ride is farther than I usually like to ride. So by then I usually need to take a break anyway so I can just charge it up then. Uh, the third pro is build quality. Meepo, I've heard some sketchy things about their build quality in the past, but it seems like they've really gotten their act together and the build quality on this board is top notch. There is one exception to that, which is in the con section, but we'll get to that in a second. Other than that exception, the whole board feels really solidly constructed. The grip tape has a nice amount of squish to it, and it's still good after I've put about 130, maybe 140,000 miles on it, and it still feels great. It's still really grippy, so I would say the build quality is fantastic. And then the last pro, which is kind of a weird one, but it's that I love this board. And the reason I wanna say this is because I'm about to get into some cons, and it's going to sound like I'm a hater or like I don't like it, but I'm telling you, this has been my favorite electric skateboard. I absolutely love this thing, but it just has some flaws. So now let's get into those flaws. The first flaw, which this isn't a big one, but I think the remote is too small. Now this sounds minor and for sure it's a preference thing, but here I have my Backfire G2 and uh, you can tell it's got a much more substantial remote. And then this one, because of the taper, it like wants to slide out of your hand almost. Again, not a big deal at all, but I thought I'd mention it. Um, maybe some people with smaller hands would like it. I personally want a bigger remote, especially for such a fast and powerful board. I kind of want to feel that it's fast and powerful in the remote, but doesn't really matter, just a minor con. Another con, and this goes back to the power, is that I wish you could adjust the acceleration curve on the remote or maybe on some software, maybe if they made an app or something. But as it is, there are like some dead zones. So if you scroll forward the first like, I don't know, 5%, maybe 10%, it doesn't do anything. Clearly built in there a little dead zone so you don't accidentally bump it. But what that ends up doing is you scroll slow, slow, slow and nothing happens. And then eventually something starts to happen. And then, and that's great, that's totally fine. But it's weird having the dead zone. So I wish you could adjust that. 
Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'd change it, but I'd play with it a little bit. And then the other thing, which is also something I wish we had control over, is if you're on mode three or four, and you scroll the scroll wheel after about maybe after you scroll like that's a hundred percent that's as much as you can scroll after you've scrolled maybe 60 or 70 percent of the way there's no difference then you can scroll all the way to 100 and it won't give you any more power so i wish what i could do is take that 30 or 40 percent of the top end that's not being used and make it accelerate more gently or that you had to move the scroll wheel more to get that acceleration. Because right now it's like you bump the scroll wheel at the bottom and it'll try and wheelie, it'll spin the wheels um, and it's fine, but I just wish you had a little more granular control over the acceleration curve. Anyway, maybe that's just a me thing. Again, it just feels like a little unsafe for me because it's so sensitive right at that start, especially in mode three or four. And I just wish you could adjust that sensitivity so that you could use the full throttle instead of only using the first half or the first 60 or 70 percent the third con and this is probably the biggest one is the charging situation so for a little backstory uh i bought the i bought the board and it was going great and i charged it just a few times and then meepo sent an email they actually sent it to everyone who had ordered a voyager i think it was like a misclick but whatever they sent an email and they said hey, we're sending you a new charger. I'm actually gonna read you the exact email because this is pretty sketch. This is, this is one of the reasons why I think you shouldn't get it right here. So they said this, they, in the email they said, to offer you an even better experience with your skateboard, we'd like to send you an upgraded Voyager charger free of charge. We're packing the charger now. You can expect to receive it in the next 20 days. You'll receive the tracking number around September 24th, which is when we're shipping a new charger. By using the upgraded charger, you will see an improved riding experience. The new charger has upgraded protection and will lead to increased dur durability of the Voyager. Now, that's totally great. I was like, oh, cool. They're sending out another charger. Then I'll have two. This is fantastic. Um, nowhere in that email uh, did they say that the old charger didn't work or was faulty or was broken. And they needed to say that because I was using the old charger and it was, it was just in the garage. Luckily the garage isn't part of the house, but it's melted. The plastic is melted. The fact that they didn't say, hey, look, our old charger is faulty or that could be something faulty about it. I thought you could just use either one of them. Not, I thought they were just sending us a new charger because I don't know, they were doing something nice. But the fact that they didn't say, hey, don't use your old charger anymore, it's a fire hazard, that is ridiculous. They needed to mention that, hey, we're doing this because it's a hazard. And like I said, mine melted and it's got, like you can see where the plastic is melted and I had only charged with it maybe five or 10 times. So that's really sketch of them to do, like really sketch. And I emailed them about it, I said, hey, my charger's melted, what's going on? And they just said, hey, did you get the new charger? Use that one. And so I'm using the new charger and that's fine. And it seems to be working totally fine, but they didn't have that transparency. And so it makes me feel really sketched out about their safety or their company's ethics because they didn't say anything was wrong with the old charger. Anyway, not to harp on that too much, but I really do think it's a big deal because if a charger malfunctions, it could literally burn your house down and people could die. So. For Meepo to not disclose that, uh, I think it's sketch. Uh, and then the, another thing which is kind of tied into the charging is that the charging plug on the board, the actual like rubber gasket sort of thing that you jam in the charging port so water and dust doesn't get in there, it sucks. You put it in and every time I push it in and you push it in as good as you can get it. And then if you ride like 100 meters, it'll have fallen out. And so I contacted Meepo's customer support because I thought maybe I just got a bad one because it should be a way snugger fit. And this might not sound like a big deal because you're like, whatever, it's just the plug. But the fact of the matter is, like, if you think about your phone, you could have the best phone in the world, but if you can't charge it because the charger's broken, the phone is useless. And that's how I feel about this skateboard where it's an awesome skateboard. It's, it's seriously amazing. Like it ticks every box for me. But if that charger port breaks because I get some dirt in it or some water in it when I'm riding because the plug doesn't hold the seal, then it's gonna just be a brick. And you know that's a really painful pill to swallow if you're spending $1,000 on the skateboard, which I think it costs like 1,200 bucks. So if you're spending that kind of money, it's really frustrating for Meepo to have seemingly skimped out on the charger plug when that's a critical component. Like if you can't use the charger, you can't use the board. So that's pretty frustrating. And that actually leads into my next part, which is customer service. So I already talked about how they sent out the new charger and I think their customer service there was terrible because they didn't tell you that, it was, that the old charger was broken. 
But then the other thing is, so I emailed them and I said, hey, my charger plug is not staying in the hole. Maybe it mine is, has some manufacturing defect or whatever it is, but it's not working. And they got back to me and they said, send pictures. And so I was like, awesome. So I sent them some pictures and they just never replied. So I emailed them again and uh, they never replied. And I emailed them again and I've emailed them, I think four times about this problem and I have no response from them after that first response where they said to send pictures. So obviously customer support needs to reply to you and that's really frustrating for them to not do. And I think this is the biggest con with Meepo is that their build quality seems great except for these flaws like the charger and the charging port but then the customer service does not inspire any confidence. I kind of feel like given my experience with their customer service so far, I'm totally on my own and if it breaks, it's just gonna be on me. And that's really frustrating because like I said, it's a really expensive board and I can't just go buying another one. And I think even though I love the board, I don't think I'm gonna buy another Meepo product because the, custom, the company needs to back up their products and Meepo doesn't seem to be doing that. So, oh, the other thing is, I think I'm just going to jerry-rig something like some bit of, I'm thinking like Velcro or snaps to hold the charging plug in place so that it'll stay. But the reason I haven't done it yet is I don't wanna void the warranty because it's, it's got a six month warranty and I don't wanna, I'm thinking I'm gonna like hot glue something on and or let me, get, let me know if you guys have a better idea because I don't think my idea is great, but I think I'm gonna like hot glue something to the, uh, to the charge plug so that I can keep it secure. But like I said, I didn't wanna do that because I don't wanna void my warranty and if they're gonna send me a new part or something, then you know I don't want them to think that I broke it uh, because I didn't, it was, just, it was just like that. But I think the fact that Meepo, their customer service, they haven't gotten back to me even though I've emailed multiple times, I think it just says something about the company and maybe this is just I've fallen through the cracks and maybe this is just a one-off but based on what I've read from forums online, it seems like Mevo just doesn't have good customer support. I mean, they're based out of China and they're a relatively new company. So it's a bit sketch, uh, it's a bit sketch. So for those reasons, uh, the customer support, the charger plug that doesn't hold in, it's probably that one. And then the charger that they said that was defective and clearly a fire hazard, but they didn't tell anyone it was defective. For those reasons, which all kind of feel related to me, um, I would say, even though this is a fantastic skateboard, I seriously love it and I'm glad I have it. For those reasons, I would say don't go buy one. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and I'll try to get to you guys. Uh, this is a real bummer to make because I think Meepo is giving probably the best value for your dollar with this skateboard as far as street boards go. Um, but I just think their customer service, they can't back up that value. And that's just part of the game. But anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and I'll see you guys later. Peace.